Hello everyone, welcome to episode 32 uh, of The Green Room and once again joined today by James. Hello Hi, James. Nick, how are we? I am very well, I am very well. Good, good, nice week. Uh, it's been very very well James, I've been very well, thank you. <laughs> good, what have you been up to? Well I think I've uh, just been admiring your haircut. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, it's about time I had a haircut. Anyway, uh, what have we got this week well this this week is big energy saving week Whoa. Um, and what is big energy saving week so big energy saving week is a set of initiatives by the government and government sponsored bodies to raise awareness about energy saving and what it says in a tin fine so this is set up by three groups yes folk. so i'll give an acronym and you can explain what they do <laughs> okay. but before i get into acronyms james yes how can people watch us on YouTube? Oh, I've given it away. Give it away. How can people watch us, listen to us, find so out So if you want to listen to us, so if you want to subscribe to our podcast, you can go on to uh, the Green Age website, which is www.thegreenage.co.uk. Favourite. And in the top right, there is a button that says podcast, and you click on it. And then it has numerous links to various different means of listening to us and subscribing. So it's Apple Podcasts, uh, TuneIn Radio, um, Spotify, Podbean, anyone else? Uh, you've st- Stitcher? Uh, Stitcher, yeah. It's hosted um, by Stitcher, isn't it? No, hosted by Podbean. Oh, Podbean, sorry. sorry. Good, glad to see you do a lot here. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you just click on any of those and you can subscribe. Uh, if you go on to your normal podcast listening app, I guess, and just type in the Green Room or the Green Age, we should pop up as well. Um, if you want to watch us, as Nick said, you can go on to YouTube, and go and see us. Um, we put these up every week, uh, so hopefully people are finding them useful. Mm-hmm. Um, and seemingly, as I've said a couple of times, now we, we get some quite nice feedback on it. Apart from the sound quality, which we are working on, uh, so you know we'll look to improve that and hopefully um, continue going forward. Mm-hmm. So back to big energy saving week. So in, just give a bit of history. I mean, the initiative ha- kind of happens around this time of year. So we, we're in January. Basically, because it's cold. It's cold, yeah. So People are spending lots on their gas, electricity. Exactly. And then if you trawl through your energy bill, you'll see that, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple of quarterly peaks, right? So one is for that period leading up to Christmas, as normally gets colder before Christmas, or this period, January, February, March, and certainly into, into April. Uh, and... Obviously, being January, and uh, how do you say, you know, once we've got over the excess of Christmas and, and New Year, you know, we're looking for ways to, you know, just be a bit more effective on how we manage our bills and, and that sort of stuff. And do you think because people aren't drinking as much in January, they feel the cold more? Well, listen, I, I, I heard that, that uh, January the 19th, the day before Blues Monday, is, is the day that most people, well, not most people, but, you know, people that make those resolutions about... Um, you know, stopping the drinking yeah. and that sort of stuff. It just goes out the window, you know. So was that like, the oh. Sunday? Yes, the Sunday. Because I broke on the Friday. Oh, So right, I didn't even make it that far. Well, at least you gave yourself the weekend, you know. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but that's it's good of you. And um, so it's, it's been going on for, for a number of years, actually. Certainly since, you know, you and I have been doing this thing mm. for, for a number of years, I, I seem to remember. And, you know, we, we, you know, we've been involved some shape or form, uh, answering back to various publications and newspapers over the years. So obviously this year, which which is 2020, we thought let's just do a video on it because uh, once we get it out, we can share it onto our blogs, you know, put it up onto different posts and, you know, just, just get it out there. Yeah. So we, we're going to go through the advice. Um, and this is coming from the Energy Saving Trust, Systems Advice Bureau and BASE, which is Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. Correct. Yeah. Well done. Um, which is the government department. Uh, so next year, I um, mean, maybe that something like the old Department of Energy um, exists again, so it might change who's in charge of this. But these are the three um, groups of folk who do it. Uh, and the Energy Saving Trust, have you got any thoughts on them? Energy Saving Trust? Uh, well, they, I, uh, certainly from what I've heard... <laughs> On the Great Wine, that they are uh, making their advice numbers more less vi- sorry less visible. So you can't phone them. We get well. a lot of phone calls. We do, don't we? Yes, it's and, peculiar. And we're very very 
you know, try and be helpful as we can. But anyway, so what I thought in terms of the format, um, they've, they've come up with 20 quite useful um, pieces of advice. So I thought we'd go through them and then based on some of the, well, recent stuff we've done or energy kind of saving ideas, you know, we did a, a hundred ways to save energy yeah. a few years ago, which is extremely popular. And, you know, we've done other, other, other we've things. We've got a thousand people reading that every day still. And we wrote that four or five years ago. Yes. Because I think, to be honest... No one most can of the come up with wrote. a list of a hundred apart from us. Yes. So what, what I thought was, is based on the publications we've made, um, we can augment this 20 ways to save energy, which is in this um, Big Energy Saving Week 2020. So let's start with the 20 uh, rattle through them and then you know we'll go in with some of our green age tips that overlay those 20. Okay so so they're looking at kitchen first um, yeah. so I've had a look at both of these and thought so for the first one a dripping tap can waste three and a half thousand litres of water that really depends on how big the drip is I would say yes um, however I'm sure they've worked it out and these are averages uh, so that's the first one. Get a plumber in, get it fixed. So you don't, you don't want any dripping taps. Um, now, in truth, it only really will save energy. So I'm, got, I'm going to go through this. If you've got an, if you've got a water meter, because mm. if you're unmetered, which a lot of people are, yes, then it doesn't matter how much water you use because you pay the same amount. Now, from a environmental point of view, it's obviously there's no point wasting water for the sake of it. Um, but strictly. I'm not sure about that one because you're not going mm. to save a bit. What, do you remember the general rule for having a water meter or not? Uh, oh. The number of people in the number of rooms. Does this ring a bell? No. So if you have more people in your house than rooms, hmm, am I going to get this the right way around? You should um, be on a... Non-meter. Uh, no, I'd say you're on a meter. If you've got more people than rooms, for sure, then you're going to use more water. Sorry, you? yeah, on non meter. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then vice versa. Yeah, then vice versa. You're mm-hmm. very wise, Nick. That's why we're a duo, James. You're very wise. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, and the thing is, once you've gone on to a water meter, you can't go back. Mm. Uh, so just be wary of that. Um, but yeah, get, get little leaks fixed ASAP. Um, the next one is. So if you have a sink, basically put the plug in it and do all your washing up in the sink full of hot water rather than running the tap. Um, I th- imagine as we go through this, there's going to be one related to doing your teeth in the same way. Mm-hmm. So they want you to turn off the tap while you're doing your teeth and then just turn on to clean the brush. That's a very bad habit I have, brushing my teeth. I just let you just the, don't, don't wash the tap them. run. Do you? But I, you know, it's bad because <clears throat> it's hot water and, and cold water. So... Obviously, then that you brush your teeth with hot water. No, not hot, scalding hot water, but lukewarm. But do you, you do that as well? What's wrong with you both? Are you serious? Room temperature, free. Okay, no, fine. You know, each to their you own. You've not heard of room temperature. <laughs> each to their own. Um, so, uh, is this something that you'd recommend? Certainly, yeah. I, I mean, I've got a bad habit, yeah. So, I, yeah, you should really use a glass when you brush your teeth. No, and... I'm, I'm going back to the kitchen. Uh, well, so with, you with fill the up the sink and you do all your washing in a sink. Yes, I mean that's how I was taught in school, but you know I don't seem to follow that very well. I just seem to keep the tap running again and yeah. again. It's wait because it's hot water. So yes, yeah. so that is a waste of energy. It is a waste. Of energy. So that one, that one will give a tick next to. So I could save thirty-six pounds a year stopping doing that. Really, according to the Energy Saving Trust. Okay, so maybe I should take a bit more note. Actually, you should. You should. <clears throat> onto the bathroom uh, is, is the next way that they've uh, structured it so this is all about showers and you know how long we spend running water so um, so what the energy saving trust and, and Bay say is basically a family of four can save 75 pounds on energy um, if they have one less shower each day so one minute less in the shower sorry one minute one thanks for reading so thanks well if, they, if they're in there so if your normal shower is five minutes I think four minutes that's very easy. The thing is, no, I take that one. I'm not even going to argue. I think that's very sensible. Do you spend? An you know, sometimes when shower. you just turn the shower on, you're like Monday morning. I'm going to be here for a while. Monday Do you morning. ever get that? Monday morning. Yeah, normally. 
So I think if you had something like one of those pebble things or a shower timer, yeah, uh, and set it to, you know, instead of ten minutes, set it to three minutes. A ten minute shower is a decent shower. No, yes. no, no, you're right. But the, but the, so we um, used to work with companies that actually manufactured mm-hmm. those kind of systems, mm-hmm. right? So they were little shower timers, and they just basically remind you to get out. Yeah. None of them turned the shower off, mm-hmm. which would have been really clever. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that exists now. Um, but anyway, worth doing, I'd say. Uh, then uh, the shower head itself. Uh, now it's, it's saying that an inefficient, uh, using an inefficient shower head with a four-person household uh, could be wasting you £70 a year on, I guess, both gas bill and then uh, if you've got a meter, over £100 a year. Uh, so, so basically, I mean, I, I don't quite understand it. I guess if you've got a hose and it's leaking or something like that. I think is what the point says. Um, no, the, no. What they mean is so when they're talking about efficient shower heads, so the shower basically it's trying to falsely volumize the water by pressuring it. Yeah. So it puts air into the water. Mm-hmm. So it gives you this false feeling that you're actually oh my god, there's so much water coming out of my shower head, but there is less than an inefficient shower head. Mm-hmm. That's how most of them work. The others work just by having less holes. Basically, yeah. Um, so, uh, I again, I disagree that it makes that much difference. But mm-hmm. you know, they've said it, so it must be true. Okay, fine. <laughs> so that's the water side of it. Uh, now, you're one of your favourite topics there. Yeah. Lighting. I, so, um, so we still go and do the old energy survey, and it's the lighting one is is one that I just find fascinating. So the amount of properties we walk into now that still have incandescent bulbs, halogen bulbs all over the shop. Mm-hmm. Now, this is literally a no brainer. And then you speak to people about it, and they say, "Well, you know, I'll, I'll wait once it blows, I'll start swapping them out." If your bulb you can't tell the difference once you've replaced it with LED now. Like the LEDs are very good and the light colours are very similar to the existing light colours of halogens and incandescents. There is no point waiting to change the bulb yeah, for a new low energy version because you save 90% of the energy, right? So yeah. if you do it now, it pays back. Before the bulb is blown, mm-hmm. it's paid back the cost of it. Yeah. So I just think it's, um, it's a bit of a no-brainer to do that with the LEDs. Uh, and you can save a lot per bulb. I mean, some of the houses we go into are quite big, mm-hmm. um, and some of the commercial produce going into are obviously enormous, mm-hmm. and they have hundreds, if not thousands, of bulbs. Now, you've got big savings you can make. So the water one I always wonder about, whereas this one with the lighting is massive because yeah. it's so easy. And if you have um, a smart meter and you have that little display that sits on the side and tells you what you're using... You can really see that if you swap everything out with LEDs, your your just your normal energy usage just drops significantly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So worth worth doing, hundred percent. Yeah, and then the next one, I mean, it's just common sense, really. It's um, so if you're not using the light in in those particular rooms, just once you've come out of the room, just turn the lights off. And and I think this is so. This is one that I think clever science will fix. Well, it's not even that clever anymore, but. You know, so we have geolocation, which is when you um, you basically your you can get tracked where you are with your phone, mm-hmm. um, and so heating systems use it now, right? They use geolocation. So when geofencing, you're, yeah, geofencing. So when you're sort of twenty five minutes, half an hour from your house, your heating will come on. So by the time you get home, your heating will be nice and warm. Same thing with lights. You know, if if I suddenly my house knows that I'm off the Wi Fi network and all my family members are off the Wi-Fi network, it could, in theory, turn out lights. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can always override it, but it's quite a nice kind of fallback option as you leave all your lights go off. Right. Have you ever been in a posh toilet where basically... (laughs) Where are we going with this? um, No, but with with the sensor lights? Yeah. But um, how do I put it? You know, you're still kind of moving, but the sensor doesn't recognise that you're moving. Yes. Then the whole bathroom turns off yes you can't really see where you're going yes. or what you're doing yes i i have i found myself in that situation once yes. um so definitely technology has to go a little bit further. no it has to improve absolutely but but this is the great thing about technology like that is something that is i think in in the next five ten years will mm. just become part of the course everyone will have their system in their homes they'll leave lights to go off okay 
So I think, again... Well worth it. Yeah, yeah. So next one, we had, I think, a bit of debate uh, in a video, uh, the video uh, not too not too far back, I think uh, uh, three or four months ago, is about standby and appliances. So basically, the idea being here that if you leave your appliances on standby, you could be wasting, well, tens of pounds on additional on your electricity bills, which you could you know save if you have things like uh, those automatic standby switches. Or you turn things off or you, the switch. Or you just turn things off. But I think we were looking at the, the ratings of some of the appliances and stuff, and we when we calculated, there wasn't actually as much as people or these companies yeah. claimed. No, agreed. And I, th- I think this is one of those ones that has definitely changed over time. So, you know, back in the day, so with old desktop computers, for example, when they were, you know, when they were first kicking about, to be in standby mode, they kind of almost had to be on. Yeah. Whereas it's now like if you had your heating on, wasn't it? So yes, you, you turn it on. <laughs> so now, now they're kind of properly off. So when they're on standby, they're using a tiny, minuscule amount of energy. So it depends how often you're replacing your appliances. If you've still got, you know, a big TV that's, I don't know, 15 inches deep, as in one of those really old mm-hmm. TVs, not a, mm-hmm. not a new type, um, then absolutely turning it off with the plug is going to make a big difference yeah but I think now the standby and, the, and this is something that the EU have brought in with their emissions and regulations they the, for things to be running in standby the electricity they use is so minuscule it makes no odds yeah um, so I think this really depends on the type of appliances you have at home obviously if you have a million and one different appliances in your house and they're all in standby the cumulative total of electricity they're going to be using is going to be significant but if it's, you know, if you've got 15 things in standby mm. and they're all relatively new, kind of from the last few years, I can't see that's going to make a huge difference. So the £30 claim here has to be what you've just said. It has to be a decent, Old laptops decent amount of, and all that kind uh, of stuff. And stuff. Yeah. So, well, you know, it's worth mentioning, but yeah, probably, you know, as technology improves, not as relevant. Okay. On to the heating side, so uh, well, heating and, a biggie. And, 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 and hot water, yeah, as as uh, in the same category. So on the hot water first, so we're talking about this uh, the I think two or three episodes ago about your immersion tank. Mm-hmm. So so that's a bad first of all. So uh, obviously, if you've got central heating, uh, gas, and what have you, try well, unless you really really need to, you know, you know something goes peaks on with a boiler try not to use the immersion switch yeah immersion for emergencies exactly. yeah mm, very good thanks uh and uh and, and yeah if, if and if, if you are going to heat the hot water tank make sure it's it's well insulated uh but secondly yeah you uh you restrict the time that when you heat it so don't have it heating all, all day uh, basically put it onto a timer so. There's it, but there's there's the. Um, I mean, I remember again we wrote something about this some time ago, and it's whether or not you leave your heating on all the time, or you turn it on and off. So if you're out working during the so day, so the hot water specifically. You're, you're going to the heating network. Oh, I was I was looking at that one, which is central heating system. But go on, sorry, talk about hot water. Uh, so I think yeah. So have it have it on a timer, and then uh, you know whenever you're gonna. So if you're gonna have showers in the morning, make sure it comes on. You know, an hour or so before. Yeah. Unless you've got a combi boiler, perfect scenario. Yeah. You, then you don't need to. When you turn on the hot tap, much. it makes the hot water. Yeah. Nice solution. Okay. Sorry. Jumping now to central Onto heating. Onto the central heating. Yeah. So there was a thing we wrote a while ago, and it was basically saying that is it better to turn your central heating on just when you need it? So if you're out at work during the day, you have it on in the morning and the evenings, or do you have it on all day, which uses more energy? And basically, it all comes down to the efficiency of your home. So if you have a really well-insulated house, you can actually just leave the heating on. Um, and it will, it'll stay nice and warm, uh, and it'll stay pretty consistent. If you have a very badly insulated house, so say a pre-1930s solid mm. wall construction house, where the rate of heat loss out of the solid walls is really quick and high, then it's actually, it's worth just heating the house two times a day you know, in the morning and for the evenings. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's a really important thing, I think, that people don't quite get yet. Um, mm-hmm. But as time goes on and the houses are obviously, more new houses come onto the market and they're being built and purchased. Yeah. For those people that live in those houses, you know, just get, leave your heating on. 
just keep it on. It'll run nicely, 19, 20 degrees. Be a nice temperature all the time. Exactly. Uh, and just going on to the big energy saving point. So what they've said was, and, and this is what we, this is the other thing we got involved in, was about the thermostat. So if you can turn turn it off by one, sorry, if you can turn it down by a degree, uh, it can save up to 10% of your heating bill. Well, a little bit leading on to what you've said about um, the inefficient homes. Now, if obviously there, it doesn't really matter what you have it on. So, I mean, if it's leaking energy left, right and centre, you're so, going to need, you're gonna need to blast it. Well, if it, So, if, if you try and turn your heating up to 30 degrees and you have a really rubbishly insulated home, yeah, it's never going to get to 30 degrees because the heat's going to leak out quicker than you can warm it up. So all you're going to be doing is basically your heating system is going to be full blast, trying to get it up to that temperature. So it's going to be running 24-7. So even if you turn it out to 25, which is 5 degrees, it will still be running on all the time. Yeah, And you wouldn't exactly. really be saving. It's, it only, you can only really accurately measure it if you've got a well-insulated home. Yeah. And the, you know, the, the house is responsive to a large extent in terms of what the thermostat does. Yes, so, and, and, and a common thing that people are doing as well, especially now with the new thermostats, they put mm-hmm. them in the hallway by the central, by the front door. Now, the issue there is obviously, so today, for example, it's freezing outside. So I open my front door. My thermostat, my thermostat gets wafted with really, really cold air. Mm-hmm. So it takes a reading and says, oh, my God, it's freezing in the house. And it turns the heating on. Well, actually, the hallway, you know, because it's, privy to these outside temperatures when you open the door it's not the place to have a thermostat you want to have your thermostat in a, in a room where the air movement is not massive so it's actually a sort of more accurate place to have it so if you had it in a living room yeah living room yeah kitchen potentially mm-hmm. um, but then but ideally not near the oven cooker, or anything yeah. um because otherwise your heat will never come on and you'll wonder why you get so cold yeah so it's just something worth thinking about where you're going to position your thermostat because a lot of people put it right bang by the front door and that is a terrible idea which leads on to the next point talking about thermostatic control so going from just you know like a kind of on and off switch from the heating to to a house where you've got uh, thermostatic radiator valves or you've got you know general thermostat or you might even have a zoning system where basically just you know you might zone it to upstairs and, and downstairs and then uh, the heating system would kind of respond to the temperature that you set in the different zones. Or you can zone every room, for instance, with, with these really clever new gadgets. Honeywell, type. Evo Home. Exactly. It's still my favourite. And I so, wish I had it. And you can zone zone that to, to, to every room. So basically then, you know, if if I want it to be 21 degrees in the living room, it would be 21 degrees, but then 18 degrees if I turn it to be, up, you know, you might not want it as warm in your bedrooms, mm-hmm. for instance. So I think... And the, the claim there that it, you know going from no thermostatic control to full thermostatic control uh, would save you about seventy five pounds a year. I think that's kind of you know a reasonable. I think it could save you more than that if if you can get that setup nailed. So it's not just you've got one thermostat in at some point in the room, mm-hmm. and that's saying whether your heating is coming on or off. You basically every radiator is specifically set up to read temperature. And allow hot water to run through them if it's cold or stops hot water running through them if the room is warm and it doesn't need warming up, then you can save a lot on your heating. Yes. Because the amount of hot water you don't need to create Mm -hmm. is just incredible. Exactly. So that's a good point. Uh, On to, well, the next one, talking about heavy curtains. So uh, if basically if you use curtains on your windows, then in theory uh, that will make the heat loss through... With the windows basically mm-hmm. uh, slow it down to an extent you'll probably even actually make the room more comfortable in terms of drafts more than the heat loss i, I think yeah uh, and also it'll give you a bit more privacy <laughs> yeah yeah and it's i mean windows we talk about this now pretty much almost every week but windows are always the weakness in your thermal envelope that's where the most heat loss occurs so curtains as you say, simple way to, to keep the room nice and warm. So definitely, definitely worth doing if you have curtains. If you have to install curtains, it's quite expensive. Yeah. Turns out. Uh, right, draft, yeah. Yeah, draft proofing. Um, so draft proofing is, you know, we, we rely on conve- convection heating here in the UK on the whole. Uh, so that is, you, you know, the air is getting warm and you feel warm because the air is warm. 
So if you have drafts that are stripping that warm air out of the room, uh, so it might be something like a chimney or just gaps around doors and windows and that sort of thing, then obviously this, this cold air is just going to strip the warmth mm -hmm. uh, and you're going to feel cold. So draft proofing is really cheap because the, the things that do it are very cheap materials. Mm -hmm. So, you know, little rubber strips you can put around your window, they honestly cost peanuts, but can make a really substantial difference to your, to your heating bills. Yes. And, and when and you're doing the, the energy, concept. yeah, and when you're doing the energy performance certificates, mm -hmm. draft proofing is always one that'll get you like a couple of ticks on your EPC rating. But actually, for the price you pay, it makes a really significant saving. So, certainly worth doing. That's one there. Uh, then on to, uh, on to, well, actually, what you can do basically uh, on your phone or, you know, during a lunch break uh, or, you know, with a glass of wine in the evening, you can look at your energy use and you can switch your supply, James. Yeah. I mean, switching suppliers is, is a very, very good one to do, I think. And we'll probably touch on this in the coming weeks, but I think being able to look at an energy bill and have a clue what all the bits mean is quite a key aspect to be able to switch properly um, and know exactly what you're going to save, but we can go through that. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a potential, if the average bill is, say, £1,200 a year, mm -hmm. it's very easy to save £100, £200 on that bill just by moving to a different energy supplier. Good. Uh, and then, so... That's that was, that's kind of the things you can do. Uh, now, the way Big Energy Saving Week have done the next section, they've done it as a sort of a quick fire round, and it's basically talking about what extra support you can get out there. So not necessarily what you can do to save, but if there's anything out there, you know, in terms of help towards your energy bills, what can you sort of do? And we're just going to rattle them out really quickly. Um, so... Uh, ooh, da -da -da -da. <laughs> do you want to kick off? Go on, home energy check. So you can get a home energy check um and that and that will show you the savings that you can make in your home uh and i, d I mean the issue here is always the the amount of savings is going to differ very much between two houses um and and so that's always the danger and typically they will charge you a fixed cost to come and do it but it may only save you 10 pounds in one particular house but it might save you 400 in another so That's you, where never, you can always do a green age plus. They can do a green age plus, which we, yeah. which we provide, um, and and we have other energy surveys that we can carry out as well. But it's um it's it's quite an interesting one that you never quite know if it's going to be worth it. But I'd I'd say on that point for people moving into new properties, you know, if you're going to be in that property for 10, 15, 20 years, it's worth knowing these things mm. because you can make some really little quick changes and they pay back the cost of that survey very, very quickly. And then obviously you get those savings for every year going forward. So worth doing. So you can visit your local Citizens Advice Bureau and um, as part of this week initiative, um, as Harry was kind of informed me earlier, you can, you, uh, there's, there's a series of events that the um, Citizens Advice and other uh, associated organizations are hosting this week. So you can basically just go in and have a chat with someone. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if, uh, if you go onto the Big Energy Saving Week website, it will give you, by your postcode, uh, the nearest um, place where, where you can go and just sort of have a chat, uh, and that, that might that might help. And then, so we go on to, if, if you're on certain government, uh, certain government entitlements, um, then contact your energy supplier, and there's this possibility that you can receive uh, some funding from the energy company obligation, uh, which is a sort of mechanism to help um, those in sort of difficulty essentially be able to mm -hmm. install potentially new boilers or uh, new insulation in particular elements of their home. Um, we mentioned this one last week. We had a query from a, from a lady who was, she'd got a quote for a boiler under the energy company obligation and she was very wary because she'd been told she had to make a contribution. Mm. Now, you explained last week how this funding mechanism works. So just be aware of that. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get everything for free, but there's definitely potential there to get a majority of it paid or, or some of it paid. Um, but it does depend on the measure. Uh, you can do things like uh, get yourself added onto the electricity priority network. So basically, you know, if... Um, if, if if obviously you you need heating because of a you know medical condition and stuff like that, and you always need to run your 
and it, it runs off electricity. If if there's a power cut, for instance, and once the power is restored, if you're if you are on that priority register, that the energy companies that are putting the power back on will all, will you know try and prioritise you just because you've sort you of, need it exactly. Um, and then there's the people who are eligible for the warm home discount, mm-hmm. uh, which is 140 40 pounds, pounds a yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you can go online and, and there's an eligibility check. Uh, so just go on to Google. Um, we'll, we'll put it on the details um, of, of this podcast later. Uh, but that's obviously a helping hand if, if you do need it. And then finally, if you're in Wales, uh, there's a scheme called Nest. Uh, so, so basically, uh, it's a funded scheme that offers things like subsidised boilers, as you were talking about, other energy efficiency measures like loft, etc., that you might be eligible for. So again, we can put the phone number and the and the link in, in the video. Now, Nicholas, we wrote this list of 100 things, mm. 100 ways to save energy in the home. But I can see there you've been busy. Yes. And you've written your top tips. So if you were to write the list instead of the Energy Saving Trust, the Energy Advice Bureau, Energy Advice Bureau? Energy Saving Advice Service. Yeah, and Department of Energy and Strategy and Industry Strategy, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, what would your tips be? Well, one key one, one key one that was missed out was loft insulation. Yeah. That I thought is absolutely key, and we harp on about it all the time. Uh, but actually, it's a, it's a really, really, you know, it's a quick win. It's a quick win. There's loads of different ways to do it. So, it, so everyone imagines as soon as you talk about loft insulation, we're talking about the wall. But if you've got, you know, lot. You want to use it for storage up there. There are ways that you can do that so you can still have lots of storage. You can use different types of insulation. You can create a warm loft. So instead of putting the insulation just above the ceiling, you can put it in the rafters instead. So actually that loft space becomes nice and warm if you want to put a kid's playroom up there or whatever. Um, So there's a huge number of options. And if you want to do it extremely cheaply, you can. And it makes really significant energy savings. Mm -hmm. Uh, the ne- next one, so we are talking about draft proofing before, but I think chimneys are a, a massive, um, well, outlet of heat loss, but secondly, draft. So some, some properties might have, you might have one fireplace, but actually I've, I've done surveys where, you know, there's four or five or six different um, yeah. chimney places. So, you know, if you can get things like uh, chimney draft excluders, like the chimney sheep, yeah, it's really, really clever, you know, it just shoves up. The chimney sheet we like more than the chimney balloon. Yes. Yeah, so the balloon was one you pump, you basically pumped a balloon up. And, it, and the the issue, well, there were a couple of issues. Number one, they deflated occasionally, mm. so they'd fall out, um, which was bad, because obviously that's not going to help keep any drafts out. But number two, there's plastic going up the chimney. And if you were to forget they're up there and you light a fire, it creates a god-awful mess. Yes. Um, the chimney sheep is obviously it's made of sheep's wool insulation, um, so it's kind of more of a natural product, uh, and actually it just fits better we think than the uh, than the balloons. Yeah, and you've got a handle as well, so you don't forget. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but you can Google those, find them online. I think you like this one, waterproofing your walls. Yeah, so so this is one that's that's relatively new, uh, but there's a huge amount of heat loss out of solid walls, um, and if they get wet, the heat loss is much higher. Uh, repointing your house, so i.e. taking the the sort of cement out between the bricks and redoing that, is is a great way to sort of tighten up the waterproofing of your house, but it's also extremely expensive. Um, so they have now these creams have started coming on the market that basically they make a waterproof layer on the outside of your house um, and what that's going to do so it doesn't stop your wall breathing uh, however it does stop any water travelling into the brick or block so it um, basically makes your home warmer because the rate of heat loss is, is higher when your wall is wet um, so yeah worth, worth having a look at I suppose the only kind of downside is probably after a couple of years you might have to just yeah look at it again yeah agreed agreed um so this is so lagging your hot water tank so when we say lag your hot water tank it means putting a jacket on your hot water tank so um we when we used to go and do these surveys the number of people that used to have a jacket on their hot water tank that was basically half the way down it you've kind of you've got the jacket there it's but incredible it's incredible amount yeah. it's not doing anything mm. so if you do get a hot water jacket 
put it on around the tank so it covers the whole of the tank so you're minimizing heat loss because otherwise there's no point doing it like it's one of those measures that it's probably the one that we saw that was the most incorrectly installed measure yes yeah um, and it's just infuriating because it's really simple, really quick to do. And maybe it was rightfully installed, but um, the issue is because it's um, you're always struggling for storage space. Yeah, so and, you, and it just moves it's it. Just no, an obvious, agreed. Obvious agreed. ways to keep stuff. But the other one was that uh, I was going to say the thermostat on the uh, on the hot water tank. So if you do have one of those copper tanks, uh, do try and get a thermostat installed as well because there's no point really heating the water to ninety degrees if you can heat it to sixty five. Yeah. So and yeah, you save a few quid, and also you won't get scolded if you accidentally uh, yeah, turn absolutely on the wrong tap. Um, so uh, oh uh, yeah, so we're talking about Wales a little bit. Uh, there's also so in Scotland, it's called the uh, it's called Home Energy Scotland, and unlike Nest, it's not a grant scheme per se, but it's um, it's a basically a zero interest uh, scheme that allows you to basically take zero interest loans for home improvements. Which seems very sensible. English government could take notes. <laughs> uh, Anything else? Uh, we've got... Um, uh, duh, 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 well, radiator duh, duh, reflectors duh, 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 is a really duh, duh. easy one. Mm-hmm. So an enormous amount of le- uh, electricity, an enormous amount of heat travels out of the wall directly behind a radiator. So a radiator reflector is, is basically tinfoil, or it looks like tinfoil. And it is reflecting heat back into the room. So you're minimizing those heat losses directly out of the wall. Uh, so certainly it's very cheap, very easy to do. It's definitely a DIY project. Um, and for what you're paying, you get decent energy savings. So worth doing. Uh, one I quite like is um, if, if you do have a stove or if you do use your fireplace, try and use um, locally sourced wood or you know from fallen trees. Uh, so uh, yeah, that obviously helps. Just go and cut down your neighbour's tree. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you you know if you happen to be I don't know taking long walks and you see wood fallen trees <laughs> on wood, just, just take it with you, dry it out, you know, reuse it. Yeah, like a proper lumberjack. Yeah, exactly. Um, but be careful on that one. Uh, that has the got clean plastic. Air. And well, no, the Clean Air Act. Um, so in central London and other major mm. cities. Uh, Naughty, naughty, burning wood. I don't have a fireplace. No, so you're fine. fine. You're yeah. fine. But it's just making people aware. Yeah. Um, but then we've got... This is a... You'd love this one. Go on then. Magnetic Tell me about se- it. Magnetic secondary glazing? I do, yes. Yeah, so, okay, so this is... <coughs> we'll, do, we'll finish with this one. But this is... Um, so uh, a lot of people <coughs> will install double glazing in their house, um, which makes a real significant difference to the energy savings. The, the issue is that if you have a uh, sort of an old property, um, a sort of uh, listed building potentially, listed home, um, you're not allowed to replace those windows with double glazing. Um, so secondary glazing, you tend to be allowed, and this is a removable type of secondary glazing. You can't tell it's there, um, but it's held on with magnetic strips, which again, if you install it correctly, it, it, you barely can tell. Um, but with secondary glazing, you get additional. So obviously, you get the energy. Can I just say, there's a fantastic video of you doing it six years ago, which is on the YouTube channel. So yeah, I'm probably looking a bit younger. Um, yeah. But also, the uh, you get it's much better for acoustics. So for me, I lived on a on a really busy road back then, and putting these panels on, you know, it just kills the sound. Uh, so it was uh, it was yeah, it's great, and a fraction of the price of getting double glazing installed, and they're made to measure. Yeah. Do we do we want to name check the company, EcoEase? Yeah. So EcoEase um, are the ones you want to go and have a look at, uh, and they they as I say it's made to measure, um, and it's uh, we'll put a link on the website, but it's um, they work very very well. Yes. So I, th- I think that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. So that was uh, big energy saving. It's still still going on. So we're in the kind of early part of the week. So it's right up until the end of this week but obviously you know this podcast and video will be available for days weeks and hopefully years to come so and, and if you do you know if you've got any great energy saving ideas um get in touch let us know what you think make the difference uh we get sent some pretty wild and wonderful ideas some of which we share back with everyone um others which which we can't 
but but do I mean get in touch and we will we'll obviously comment on it and chat about it. Um, but that's I think it for this week. Uh, so Nick, thank you. Thanks, James. And uh, we will see you next week. <laughs>